Hi guys, my name is Manish Kumar and welcome back to Google Maps system design series. In part one, we laid the foundation by going over functional requirements, non-functional requirements, capacity estimation and a high level design. In this video, we are going to dive deeper into the architecture. I'll walk you through the key services that power Google Maps. Also, I'll explain how they work together and even define APIs for these services. So the goal is by the end of this session, you will have a much clearer picture of how such a large scale system is structured and how you can approach similar system design problems in interviews or real world projects where you are working upon. So if you have not watched the part one yet, I recommend checking that out first before you go into this video, part two. And if you find this video useful, please don't forget to subscribe it because that's really motivates me. And also don't miss to press the bell icon so that the when the part three will come where we will explore how Google Maps calculate estimated time arrival and how they use the machine learning in it, you will not miss it. So without any delay, let's start the session and see you in the session. So far, we have covered all our functional requirement. One thing which we missed here is the map rendering. So our navigation service will help provide like navigating the user from source to destination. But we need one more service here and that will be map rendering service. This will provide URLs for the tile based upon the user location. What all different tiles user need to download to see the uh, map. And we will talk more about because here the data is involved. So we, we will talk more about that, like how it will look like. So let's start with location service first. How the location service will look like. So for location service, what it will do, we talked about that it is sending uh, data in every 15 seconds. So what will be the API post version one dot ho location. And here it will be sending out the user ID and a timestamp and let and long. So this will be request coming from the location service to save the user location. And because this location is supposed to be used to navigation service also, the map rendering service also, and for ETA, so what we need to do here, we need to put a queue and we might use Kafka for that. And what location will do, location will update the information in Kafka here. And these service will fetch the information. ETA service will also get the information from this. So now location is coming, location getting updated into Cassandra DB and like Kafka is like storing that information, all the services, map rendering service, ETS service are picking the location from Kafka. So now that seems like pretty uh, reasonable. So this is about the location. Now, what next? If you uh, see, how the navigation service will work, get navigation details for given source and destination. So it will give the user uh, and the source like the current location, rather saying source, let's call it the current location or the starting point. And the destination and based upon that 
the navigation will help user to navigate to the destination so this will be the navigation service and then the map rendering service this will be get map tiles for the current location user current location and the zoom level as we know uh, we have the tiles map tiles is stored at different zoom level in our s3 drive and uh, what map rendering service will give map rendering service will return the list of urls for the uh, tiles which is like in the surrounding of the user so uh, understand this little more let's do little math which will give you even better understanding what we are talking here so how the map rendering service will work so to understand this because um, we have the non-functional requirement that is saying that we should have the least data uses so map rendering service should download only the map tiles which are necessary for navigation so to understand it better let's do little math here so let's make certain assumptions to understand this let's say a user is running at 50 km per hour speed and it has uh, at the zoom level where it is like 200 meter by 200 meter uh, tiles need to be shown for the user and let's say its tile size is 100 kb and to uh, show the map on the mobile app uh, user is using we have to show one kilometer by one kilometer map area so to do that using 200 meter by 200 meter tile we need 25 tiles to cover this entire one kilometer by one kilometer area so basically what we are saying it is to, to 2500 kb or 2.5 mb data to show the one kilometer by one kilometer map now because user is running with 50 kilometer per hour so to show that entire one kilometer by one kilometer map area during this 50 kilometer journey so the user will get 50 into 2.5 megabyte data total in all user will down, download which is 125 MB data per hour. So now if we see how much data per second need to be downloaded we can easily calculate 125 divided by 3600 that is per second data user data need to be downloaded 0.036 mb so maybe we can say 0 0.05 mb or 5 kb per second data is like required to keep the navigation running during this entire journey so uh, you can see like how this like the data downloading speed we have reduced up to 5 kb per second just to keep running user for this entire 50 kilometer journey so basically what map rendering service is doing it is using the um, current location and the zoom level based upon this data this is deciding level tile need to pick up and what how many tiles it need to be downloaded and those tiles are getting downloaded from s3 now if you will see closely how much total data we are downloading per hour so we have 125 mb data per hour and there is 1 billion user they are using 5 minute daily so if we say 125 mb divided by 60 this is data uses per day 
So this will come out to be 1 billion into 5 into uh, 2 MB and which will come out to be 10, 2 into 10 raised to power 9 and into 5 which will come out to be 10 raised to power 10. So 10 raised to power 3 MB is 1 GB, 6 MB is 1 TB and 9 MB is 1 PB. So this is 10 PB data, 10 petabyte of data per day required to be downloaded. So, see, to download this huge data per day, we need distribute. Dis we need something to distribute load, and that's the that's the the CDN is the best thing which is serving us. So, what it is doing, if you it's let's say five hundred uh, CDN nodes are there, we call it pops. Five hundred pops are there, which are serving for this entire data. So, and if we just may assume that all are like have the same load so it is like 2 into 10 raised to power 9 or 10 raised to power 10 sorry simple 10 raised to power 10 MB data divided by 500 which will come out to be 2 into 10 raised to power 7 MB and again 10 raised to power 3 MB is 1 GB, 10 raised to power 6 is equal to 1 TB, so it is 20 terabyte of data per pop, per day. This is the data each CDN service will be providing and how much it will come out to be per second, we can easily calculate that 2 into 10 raised to power 7 divided by 10 raised to power 5, so it's like 200 MB data per second. It's a very reasonable size per pop. So basically what it is doing, the entire tiles are like available on the CDNs, the map tiles, map rendering service for sending the URLs to the client and clients are downloading corresponding tiles to show the map on the screen user is using. And the um, road data which is graph is like coming down onto that map, helping user navigate to the destination. So now we talked pretty deep down about location service, map rendering service, navigation service. We talked about APIs here, what all different APIs these service gonna use. And uh, we talked about data uses, these NFRs. Now the question comes to highly available. So to make the system highly available, these all systems, all services should be horizontally scalable. And to do that, what we need to do, we will have a load balancer here and a gateway. If we want to make horizontally scalable applications, we need to make those stateless. And to make stateless, we need to take out the session from the services. And, and gateway helps out here uh, to take out the session from services. So the session is out here now. This, this is session DB I'm just putting here so that it will be clear for you that why these are stateless services. And these all services are now horizontally scalable, which means we can spin up more instances as the load increase. And when we have more than one instance to balance load across the instances, we need the load balancer. So we have the load balancer. We have not talked too much about ETA service. ETA service, I will create a part three video. I try to keep it within the uh, 10 to 15 minutes range so that you can easily consume on all this information. Now you know how these different services are together how different databases are there, how information is flowing. Thank you so much guys and see you in part 3 of this.